Saint Ignatius of Loyola was a former military commander and he loved to use military metaphors. In one of his most interesting rules of discernment, he wrote, just like an enemy attacking a fortified castle, examines it from every side to find a weak spot and there he attacks. So the enemy of our human nature searches all our virtues to find a weakness and there he attacks. When I and just about everyone else reads this, we think about our sins and bad habits and wonder why St. Ignatius wasted the ink to write this down. After all, we've been taught over and over again to regularly examine our sins. The problem with this interpretation is Ignatius doesn't say the enemy examines our vices. Instead, he says, the enemy examines our virtues to find a place to attack. How can our virtues lead us astray? And why would the enemy choose to attack our virtues rather than our vices? Let us take the second question first. St. Ignatius, at this point, was writing about good, virtuous people whose lives are pointed toward God. They aren't people that are going to get off track easily by vices. So if you are a clever, evil spirit, what do you do? Vices aren't going to work. So the clever, evil spirit takes one of our virtues, distorts and exaggerates it to lead us away from doing God's will. Here's what that would look like for a priest. Take a hardworking priest exaggerate that desire to help other people till the priest becomes so absorbed in work and activities that there's no room for prayer. Soon he's burnt out. The opposite also can happen. The priest is so dedicated to prayer, exercise, sleep, and living a balanced life that he never gets any work done for God. What's true of priest is true of everyone. Take the hard worker and make him a workaholic that doesn't have time for his family or church. Take the person that insists on doing their best and make them a perfectionist, which steals joy from their work and greatly diminishes the amount of good work they're able to do. Take the person that wants to help other people and make them codependent so they start trying to save other people by manipulating them and taking over responsibility for the other's life. Take the person who's intellectually rigorous and insist on becoming an expert before teaching others. Suddenly, they are paralyzed by never knowing enough and don't share the good information they have. Or take the person with a sensitive conscience and make them scrupulous so they can only think about their sins rather than God. Their sensitive conscience also pushes them away from God since they don't feel worthy. This last situation actually happened to St. Ignatius and he almost gave up trying to be a saint and serving God. I could go on and on. But the point is, virtues can become compulsions. St. Ignatius wants us to examine our virtues, perhaps even what we're most proud of, and consider if those virtues have become exaggerated or distorted. If we see a virtue that's preventing us from growing closer to God and others, now we don't throw that out like we would a vice, this virtue is a good part of our lives. We just need to use prudence, moderation, and balance as we live this virtue. We need to draw some boundaries around this virtue so that it doesn't lead us away from God or others. To conclude, too much of a good thing is not good, even the virtues. So consider if one of your great virtues is leading you away from God and others. How might you create some boundaries to prevent this virtue from becoming a compulsion? 
How might you bring back balance and moderation into your life?